Vox would never lie to you, right? You trust them. It's not like they're slimy mother Time for a rebuttal video. This one's here by popular request. The Vox video on gun control uh, has picked up some steam. I'm surprised no one's addressed it. So right off the bat, let me tell you, we'll address why this is propaganda. And it's not a word that I use lightly. People can disagree, and sometimes they have different facts or sources. Propaganda can only be used as a label when they knowingly mislead you, which is the case with this Vox video, um, as we'll prove. It's, it's long, so let's get to the video. The United States has a problem with gun violence. Dramatic music. In our hearts. Perhaps we may never fully... Is this Vox video or Cider House Rules? We talk about it after mass shootings, but it's much larger and more complicated than those debates allow. Here's what you need to know about the state of gun violence in America. It's true that the U.S. sees many more mass shootings than these other developed countries. Between 2000 and 2014, there were 133 mass shootings in public populated places. That's excluding gang violence and terrorism. So before we get to the point-by-point -point debunking, which we'll do, um, here's the important through line. She uses the term mass shooting. Well, mass shooting isn't a legally defined term. It's not even specifically defined in her source that she includes. We'll bring it up here on the screen. There isn't universal agreement as to what a mass shooting is, which is why it's hard to compile data. It's sort of like comparing violent crime rates. Different places have different standards. So it's important to note that because they're going to use this umbrella term, mass shooting, to plant the idea in your head. And we'll get to this very specifically. But they want to plant the idea in your head that with a rise in legally owned firearms, you see an increase in violent gun crime, which is patently false. It's entirely untrue. So it's important to note they're using mass shooting as the umbrella to make that point. Now, right away, the chart she uses is misleading because it's not even per capita. The United States has more population than many of these countries combined. When you look at her original source at PolitiFact adjusted uh, for per capita rates, the chart is nowhere near as drastic with even Norway, Switzerland, and Finland having more fatalities and deadly mass shootings. Of course, the U.S. is a much larger country, but if you adjust for population size, it still ranks higher. Of these countries, Finland is next, with just two shootings over 14 years, but a much, much smaller population. This is what's misleading. She specifically uses number of mass shootings, not victims or deaths, because even though you see this here, Norway and Finland are comparable relatively in frequency, they have a much higher death toll on average than American mass shootings. And this type of tragedy seems to be happening more often in the U.S. They say seems to be an increase in mass shootings because what they don't tell you is that violent crime has decreased. Again, an umbrella non-defined term like mass shooting is much more easy to manipulate than the legal standard of crime, which has gone down. Each of these squares represents a public mass shooting with four or more fatalities. Before 2011, they happened six months apart on average. But since then, only two months go by between them. This is interesting too, whereas before she was cherry picking data was kind of vague, all of a sudden she's very specific in narrowing this criteria to psychopathic outliers whose name you will remember, like Columbine, Virginia Tech, Sandy Hook. Also interesting to note, with the exception I think of Luby's, I'm not entirely sure, occurred in gun-free zones. Luby's, of course, only being a decent food-free zone. During my tenure as president, to offer my condolences to families in these circumstances. That was October 1st, 2015. And just about two months later... Yesterday, a tragedy in San Bernardino. San Bernardino? Okay, hold on a second. I thought all these stats were excluding gang violence and terrorism. That was what they said at the outset. This is important later on. Now we're talking Islamic ISIS sympathizers who yelled Allahu Akbar and opened fire and were tossing it into the same statistic as Tommy finding daddy's revolver in the secret drawer? It's okay, I'll forgive her. Even Barack Obama himself still has San Bernardino, not listed as terrorism, but gun violence. Wouldn't want to offend those Muslims. Let's go back to taking away your Second Amendment rights. Public mass shootings get all the attention because they're often so indiscriminate. But the truth is mass shootings are unlike most gun deaths in America. Here's how it breaks down. According to the most recent data, 92 people are killed with guns every day on average. About 30 of those are homicides, of which maybe one and a half at most can be considered part of mass shootings. Real quick, because we'll come back to this, 80% of those gun-related homicides in the United States are drug-related. Let's go. Most of those killed, 58 people a day, are suicides. The rest are accidental shootings, police actions, and undetermined incidents. Those suicides, they show up in international comparisons too. 
These are the 10 countries ranked highest on human development by the UN. She wants to ignore that because we want to get to American suicide. Suicide is a terrible thing. But to use it as a political tool to remove law-abiding citizens' basic human right to self-preservation is pretty terrible, too. The reality is that per capita, the United States does not have an abnormally high suicide rate. Here are the countries that do. Surprise! Many of these places are unfree countries with highly regulated gun control. These are the 10 countries ranked highest on human development by the UN. The US has the highest suicide rate among them. And this darker bar shows how many of those are with guns. So now the chart sheet sites is specifically countries ranked highest on human development from the UN, not countries with the highest suicide rates, not even developed countries, which you could say would be fair, you know, as opposed to comparing Zimbabwe and the United States. She picks a very specific vertical for what to include. Sorry, South Korea, Japan, and Poland. Apparently, you're not developed countries. That Samsung Galaxy is a figment of your imagination. But to go and think that some type of gun control regulations that are being talked about are going to stop somebody from committing suicide when there's so many other ways for people to commit suicide. But the methods that people use are important because suicide attempts often stem from temporary crises. The vast majority of people who survive suicide attempts don't end up dying from suicide. But guns make it nearly impossible to get that second chance. The victims of gun suicides are overwhelmingly men and mostly white. Now we get into the personal stories to hit you right in the feels. I do understand that it might be hard to compare suicide rates uh, across different countries because of cultural differences. So an example that you do have would be looking at Australia before and after the gun ban. Uh, and the suicide death rate remains virtually unchanged. Though it is interesting to see Vox say that suicide is, correctly, mainly a white male problem. Check your privilege and he's dead. To sum this up, the United States does not have a high suicide rate. Banning guns has not proven to be effective in diminishing suicide. And if I'm going to give my own personal opinion, suicide is terrible, but it doesn't infringe on somebody else's rights. So that's a decision you have to make. We have to move on because now there's a switch. And the rate of gun suicides has been increasing in the US. At the same time, the rate of gun homicides has been decreasing, especially since the 90s when crime rates in general were higher. But if you compare the US to other developed countries, it doesn't look like good news. These are homicides adjusted for population size. The US would probably have a higher homicide rate even without guns, but you can see how gun violence pushes that rate far beyond the other countries here. The victims of these shootings, they're not the ones you often see on the national news. They're disproportionately young black men. Just like that, we've switched from suicides to homicides without skipping a beat to make some kind of a racial point. Again, 80% of homicides in the United States are drug related. And the United States is nowhere near the top of any chart for murder rate or even firearm deaths. Notice how now, unlike before, she's using a stat that includes gang crime. That 80% drug related homicide might play a factor here. You guys can leave here and go on with your lives, but we gotta go on to empty rooms. Because our children's lives were taken away by people who should not have had guns anyway. Ooh, just yelling at me like I shouldn't have a gun. Again, anecdotal information to personally manipulate the viewer. Now, it's sad that this lady lost her son, but her son was shot by gang members. Statistically, gang members aren't buying their heat at Walmart. As a matter of fact, one of the shooters involved in this incident already was a criminal not legally capable of purchasing a gun, regardless of whether the gun was legal in the first place. Side note, Chicago has some of the strictest gun laws in the country, also the highest homicide rate. One possible explanation is that the U.S. simply has more crime than those other countries. But if you set aside homicides for a moment and look at rates of burglary or assault, you don't see that same spike that you see with homicide. Pause. Interesting fact about burglary. In the U.K., with strict gun control laws, mind you, 59% of burglaries are what they call hot burglaries, which means the person is home when the house is burgled. At least they're going to say, you're being burgled. It's not as intimidating. As opposed to the United States, where only 13% of burglaries occur when the resident is home. For reference, hot burglaries have a much higher potential for violent conflict. Hmm, I wonder what could be deterring, said a hot burglary stateside. Hmm. This is why it's important to know when you're being manipulated when someone's switching between stats that include gang violence and terrorism until they don't. Because yes, the United States certainly has more gang on gang crime. Europe has a startling trend of more predator 
against defenseless victim crime. A big factor for that we'll address later on in this video that she never mentions. It's not that America has much more crime. It's that crime in the U.S. is much more lethal. Altogether, the number of gun deaths in the U.S. from 2000 to 2013 exceeds the number of Americans killed by AIDS, by illegal drug overdoses, the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, and terrorism combined. It should be clear by now that this level of gun violence is a uniquely American problem among the developed world. First off, why does she throw AIDS in there? AIDS is not a serious problem for most Americans unless involved in, shall we say, very specific activities. Why would you include drugs on that list, but not the fact that 80% of gun homicides are drug-related? Also, how are war casualties not gun-related? Is this only mortar fire? Is it waterboarding outliers? What? I'm also imagining this would be skewed, uh, considering that San Bernardino would be included down here and not up here with terrorism. It should be clear by now that this level of gun violence is a uniquely American problem among the developed world. This is important here because she finishes on the words gun violence, but this big scary black bar is not indicative of gun violence. It's total firearm related deaths. That's important because when comparing actual gun homicide rates worldwide, the United States only ranks 28th. This is a pivotal sleight of hand here because this includes total firearm deaths right before she pivots. This level of gun violence is a uniquely American problem among the developed world. And here's one reason why. There are a ton of guns in the US. This chart shows the estimated number of guns by country. It's adjusted for population size and it's still not even close. Ah, see, now this chart is comparing countries. But this chart is not about homicide. It's not about firearm deaths. It's only about gun ownership. All of this is designed to lead you into believing that gun ownership, legal gun ownership, results in increased violent gun crime. Important to note, if gun ownership, as seen in this chart, is so much higher, but the United States still ranks 28th in gun-related deaths, why is that the case? It also ironically unravels her own point. If gun ownership is so drastically higher in the United States, but we're only 28th ranked in overall gun homicide rate, that means proportionally legal gun owners in the United States are committing fewer crimes. If you take a look back at the 10 countries with the highest levels of human development, you can see that it's relatively really easy to get a gun in the US. All of the other countries require a license to purchase most guns, and those purchases are recorded into an official registry. To get that license, people have to state a reason for why they want a gun. And in most of these countries, they have to pass a safety test and are required by law to store their guns safely. First off, it's funny how they put right to bear arms, signaling out the United States as a negative here in this chart, which is tipping their hand because that's ultimately their end goal. But they'll tell you you're crazy, you're paranoid if you think that leftists just want to take your guns away. Brief history lesson. The United States has a Second Amendment because of a very different history than these other countries. Unlike Canada, for example, who bent over for the king, the United States decided to fight for freedom. And we wanted to hang on to that right to ensure that we were never taken over by a tyrant like, oh, I don't know, say Hitler. Something else to note, along with the 80% drug-related gun homicide, is most gun crime occurs in heavily populated areas, urban areas, big cities. And the United States has more big cities than many countries on this list combined. Which is why many crime bureaus readily admit that comparing violent crimes across different countries is nearly impossible to do. In part because of its lax laws, there are well over 300 million guns in the U.S. and counting. This chart doesn't reflect private sales, but it shows the number of background checks, which all federally licensed dealers have to run. It suggests that the demand for guns has been increasing steeply since Barack Obama took office. This part is uh, absolutely true. Despite how hard it is to trust someone who can't properly spell Obama, I know. With Barack Obama's demagoguery, people were concerned, and many did exercise their Second Amendment right for the very first time. Hence the legal background checks. Oh no, wait, that you, we're, we're, that's a bad thing now. Side note, violent crime has still been decreasing. Matter of fact, firearm-related homicides have gone down a whopping 39% from 1993 to 2011. Which is important to note because this steep, scary graph is designed to plant the idea in your head that more legal gun owners equals more gun crime. Not true. Matter of fact, in a study in 1994, they found that only 21% of gun crimes involved a firearm purchase through a store or traditional outlet. Meaning, legally. The most recent study would suggest that it's closer to between three 
3 and 11%. There's a variance because these issues are kind of hard to study. Felons aren't known for their truthful integrity. Again, this unravels her argument. Because regardless of background checks, the amount of gun crime committed by legal firearm owners is either the same or very likely lower than before, rendering this graph irrelevant. Next point. So we've looked at gun deaths and at gun ownership. This chart puts them together. It shows that among highly developed countries, the more guns in a country, the more gun deaths. You can see that countries like Switzerland, which have relatively more guns than a country like the Netherlands, also have a higher gun death rate. And here's the US. See the sleight of hand? We were just talking about homicide and gun purchases. Now we're back to gun deaths, not homicide or violent crime, because those would include suicides or violent intruders or criminals being killed by law-abiding, gun-owning homeowners. Likewise, US states with more guns have more gun homicides. There are outliers like Idaho, which has higher rates of gun ownership, but low rates of gun murders. But overall, there's a correlation between gun ownership and homicide rates. And that relationship has held up in studies that control for things like poverty, unemployment, and crime. Actually, no, those outliers can be explained because there's a strong correlation between gun deaths and big populated cities and gang violence. That's why the sleight of hand is important. Sometimes she includes it, sometimes she doesn't. And if this particular study doesn't include big cities, but poverty, it renders it irrelevant because poverty is still the biggest indicator for violent crime, uh, far more so than mere gun ownership. The correlation between gun ownership and gun deaths is even stronger for suicides. It makes sense. No, it doesn't. None of it does. Look behind you. There's what made sense. Depression with a gun is more dangerous than depression without one. Okay, this again brings us back to the fact that the United States does not have an abnormally high suicide rate. So now she wants to blame the conjoining of guns and depression. But earlier she admitted that middle-aged white men make up an abnormally high percentage of the suicide rate, even though women are more likely to suffer from depression. So again, the mind trickery, we've gone from blaming the gun to now blaming depression and the gun, which counteracts her previous statement on suicides to begin with. Likewise, fights, domestic disputes, road rage, drunkenness, all much more dangerous with a gun than without. That said, you might need different policies to keep guns away from potential mass shooters than you would to keep them out of inner city gangs or out of the hands of someone who might hurt themselves. America doesn't have a gun problem. It has several of them. Okay, so here's the big takeaway. This video has equally represented mass shootings, suicide, and gang violence as though they proportionally contribute to the gun-related problem. Despite the fact that 80% of gun homicides in the United States are drug-related, despite the fact that the biggest indicators of gun crime are big, populated areas and poverty, despite the fact that the United States is not even in the top 25 in firearm-related deaths, despite the fact that the United States does not have an abnormally high suicide rate, despite the fact that with increased legal gun ownership, gun crime has actually steadily declined, and despite the fact that Vox had a beautiful canvas to work with at the outset by using the umbrella term mass shooting, which was completely undefined and even included acts of terrorism like San Bernardino. It's one thing to get your information wrong. It's another to deliberately mislead people because the facts don't stack up with your narrative. So when you look at the actual statistics and data that we've presented here, there are some solutions where we could find common ground. Things like Project Exile, which we've covered at the website, where you have harsh penalties for felons illegally carrying firearms. Things that deter criminals from getting firearms or carrying firearms because that is where the problem truly lies. But they'll never present this information to you at Vox. Let's assume for a second that you believed everything Vox presented here to be true, that the United States had a staggeringly high suicide rate, abnormally high homicide rate, that there was a correlation between legal gun owners and gun violence and firearm-related deaths. How could you fix that problem? That's important. They've already shown you. It wouldn't be some kind of an arbitrary assault weapons ban, which really these weapons don't comprise of most of this gun violence anyway. It wouldn't be some kind of a limitation on magazine capacities. It would have to be. Of course, an all-out gun ban, declaring that you legally do not have the right to self-preservation, which is in fact what several Supreme Court justices argued before the high court, that none of you have the right to own firearms, period, for any reason unless your jurisdiction deems it so. But don't worry, you're just crazy thinking that people like Vox want to take your guns away. 
Hey, if you like this video, you must be new to the internet because there's a lot of better content out there. But if you're still here, you might want to click this big box where you can see my rebuttal to the Young Turks and their anti-firearm propaganda. Or click my face here to go to the website where you can find all of our references and sources linked for this video. You don't have to take my word for it. There's also a video below me. I don't know what it is. That was a LeVar Burton reference reading Rainbow.